What is up, everyone? And welcome to Roby Tech, where I, Justin Roby, aka Roby One Kenobi, talk tech with you, wonderful people. We're gonna get you up to speed on everything going on in the PC hardware and gaming world. Now, today's episode is gonna be thick, triple C thick. So buckle up, Buttercup. We're talking top selling games on Steam, Corsair acquiring Scuff, the Game Awards announcements, trailers, and more. This is Roby Tech. Now, it's no mystery that we love Corsair on the show. We just built in a Corsair case with Corsair parts for the Xbox Extra Life 27 hour live stream where we raised over $150,000. Now, as most of you know, Corsair doesn't just make PC parts. What? I know. But they also make peripherals like keyboards, mice, mouse pads, and headsets. Now, Corsair wants to throw their hat into the controller ring. And let me just say, welcome to the family. Now, rather than designing their own controller from the ground up, they've opted to go the route of acquiring a company that's been doing it right for a few years. Scuff Gaming has been around since 2011 and have made some really awesome controllers over the years. One of the biggest reasons why Corsair sought to acquire Scuff is their modular design to controllers, allowing users to configure the controller exactly how they want makes it a versatile product that gamers absolutely love. From paddle controls, removable back paddles, quick mat remapping switch, customizable thumbsticks, trigger stops and extenders, hair triggers, D-pad options with magnetic faceplates, you can make a pretty dope controller with a lot, a lot of options. My head's spinning a little bit from just reading all of that. Now, of course, I will be wrapping up the final details of the acquisition by the end of this month. So who knows when we might see our first Corsair Scuff black and yellow controller, but you can bet that we will want to get our hot little hands on them as soon as they are available. Maybe even sooner. Hmm? Those of you who watch PC content on YouTube will be familiar with the star of this story, Debauer, who is well known on the PC building community for ripping the lids off any CPU you can get his hands on. Roman got a hold of a Threadripper 3 and wanted to find out whether you could truly delid and cool the new CPU. The long and the short of the story is, yes it's possible, but there are some tweaks that may need to happen to make this optimal. DeBauer ran a control test with the lid still on the Threadripper in the Asus Strix TRX40E motherboard and an EK pump slash reservoir combo with a 360 rad. Now with the clock speed set to about 4.3 gigahertz across all those hashtag beefy cores at the 1.392 volts, it hit a max temp of 86 degrees Celsius in a Cinebench R20 pass. Now after removing its hat, or its lid, the Bauer found that the socket had to be modified to account for the height of the die so they don't damage the CPU after applying Thermal Grizzly's con uh, Conductonaut Tim on each die. They found that temps to be more or less the same as stock in the 85 to 86 degrees Celsius range. It looks like there needs to be some adjustments made to the mounting pressure applied to the CPU, but it is possible to delid a Threadripper 3. It's just not going to do a whole lot right now without modifying coolers to get an adequate amount of mounting pressure to keep those chiplets cool. You know what? I like chiplets. I like chiplets with chicken. I just like to say the word chiplets. With the current generation of GPUs getting roasty toasty, it requires some thick boy heat sinks and cooling, adding a lot of weight to the GPU that is only supported by a few little thumb screws on the case and the PCI socket on the motherboard. GPU sag has become a bit of an issue as a result. Sounds like a medical commercial we need to get into, Brian. Do you have GPU sag? So much so that a few GPU manufacturers like MSI, which if you watched last, uh, last week's episode, you know a little bit about this, have included GPU support bars with their graphics cards, like this big thick boy back here. But what's the one issue with all of those out of the box GPU struts, you might ask? Well, they aren't RGB, duh. And everyone knows that if your GPU is RGB, it supports struts should be RGB also, because RGB means really great boost in speed. Duh. But fret not. BitPhoenix has come to the rescue with their new Alchemy 3.0 RGB GPU support bar. Huzzah and hoorah. This meaty boy can support a GPU of up to 16 pounds. Holy cow. <laughs> I can't wait for our first 16 pound GPU and lets you daisy chain any, any Alchemy 3.0 lighting strip or Spectre ARGB fan you might have in your case already. Do keep in mind that this bar will take up to three of the PCI brackets in your case, so if you are using this you might not be able to fit a PCIe capture card expansion slot or NVLink two GPUs together. 
But heck, if your GPU caught, weighs 16 pounds, who cares? But if this means your GPU doesn't sag also, and bend or twist, then that's a pretty solid trade-off in my opinion. I just, you know, I know MSI and ASUS are watching this right now going, 16 pound GPU, we're on it. Now, we are coming up on Steam's winter sale, and we thought it'd be a great time to see what games are currently selling the best on the platform right now. So hold on a sec, let me just type into my PC here, www.steam.com into my personal computing device, and oh, the top selling games would be, oh, well would you look at that. Aside from Steam's Valve Index VR kit, the top selling game right now on Steam is Halo The Master Chief Collection. Oh. I'm just saying, that's awesome. Now, in the top five, we've got Planet Zoo's Arctic Pack Upgrade, GTFO, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and Hades. Now, if we're only counting full games and not upgrade packs, then Red Dead Redemption 2 would round out that list. Other notable titles in the bestseller category is Halo Reach, which released on PC December 3rd, Age of Empires 2, and GTA 5. Just, just wanted to shout out there that two of those titles I actually worked on, so there's a trend there, just saying. Now what's near the bottom of the top 25 list, GTA 5 is still selling like hotcakes even though it was released on PC back in 2015. And keep in mind that it has been out on console since 2013 when it released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 before coming to the PS4 and Xbox One the following year. It seems that GTA 5 is the new Skyrim on Steam where people will buy it years after it's released. Another takeaway is that Steam users really love Planet Zoo. With Rise of the Skywalker officially out in theaters, it's been well established that Battlefront 2 will get new skins, maps, characters, and updates with the release of each Star Wars film, or major Star Wars film. Rise of the Skywalker is no different and adds maps with a new movie as well as Red Stormtroopers, Jetpack Troopers, New Alliance races, new alien races for Rebels, and more themed skins for your favorite characters. We're also getting an additional planet in a few days on the 20th, as well as BB-8 and his First Order counterpart, BB-9E, as playable characters. DICE has really managed to turn Battlefront 2 around since its rocky start back when it launched and went through a year of growing pains after it was mired in bad PR revolving around its loot box design. Yes, in fact, most of the trouble in loot boxes were all based on this game and is still legally bound for a long period of time. Yeah. Now around the time that Gnosis was released with General Grievous and the Obi-Wan Kenobi with Clone Wars content, the game started its upward swing and released more content with player for the player base that they were hungry for. They listened to their community and it shows in the content that they've been making since that time. Now Battlefront 2 also owes some of its rescue resurgence to players' interest in Fallen Order. A lot of gamers that finished Fallen Order thought it would, might be a, worth jumping back into Battlefront 2 after getting hit by the Star Wars game bug and were pleasantly surprised by the state of the game. Now, DICE had done a lot of work to improve the game to where it's actually worth getting into. So they have announced a celebration edition of the game for $40 that will give you every cosmetic option in the game that's currently available with the option to upgrade for cheaper if you already own it. So let us know in the comments below if you're gonna get back into Battlefront and what hero characters you'd like to see them add in the game. As we saw last year with the Game Awards, this year we got a lot of new announcements for games and trailer drops. It's interesting to see the Game Awards become another major event where developers choose to unveil their projects outside of E3, which does make sense as press during E3 is largely dominated by major titles and releases. Now this year we got the Xbox Series X unveil, woohoo! Announcements for Hellblade 2, a new player unknown project, Wizards of the Coast Dark Alliance game, and a whole lot more, including a new Ghost of Tsushima, which looks insanely good. Now, a lot of these reveals were pretty bare bones, with Player Unknown's prologue not really giving much, as much info about the game actually is. But the biggest title that came out of the event was probably Hellblade 2. Created by Ninja Theory, Sanua's saga Hellblade 2 looks freaking gorgeous, with outstanding performance captures and a world that looks just as creepy as the first title in the game. If you have not played Hell, Hellblade Sanua's, you should go check it out now. Now, while the cinematics look flawless with all of the footage captured in engine, let's hope that the finished product slated to release for Series X looks just as good. Well, that's it for Roby the Heck today. I know, I know, calm down. There'll be another one later this week. But let us know what you thought about the news today in the comics below. Are you interested in Corsair slash Scuff Gaming Controller? Are you brave enough to delete a Threpper for three? If you are not a professional, please say no. What was your favorite announcement at the Game Awards? Let us know in the comments below.
And while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, click that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also head over to Mixer.com slash Kenobi and give us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. And be sure to drop us a follow over there on Instagram and Twitter at Kenobi. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Yeah. Go play some games, watch some trailer, or better yet, go catch Top Gun 2 trailer. Whew, that's some hot stuff, baby. Hashtag beefy cores.